Today, we are introducing our SH HV40 High Vacuum Pump System. We designed this for conducting heat treatment with highly oxidizable materials, like titanium and various alloys. What you see here is a vacuum tube furnace with a gas supply system connected to our SH HV40 High Vacuum Pump System and a separate chiller for the high vacuum pump. This high vacuum pump system can also be connected to our vacuum muffle furnace or vacuum drying oven. Now, let's take a closer look at the SHHV40 pump itself. I'll highlight some key features and controls, then give a quick demonstration of how to operate it. First off is the control panel. That's where you'll find a digital vacuum meter, the main power switch, the emergency stop button, four control buttons, and several indicator lights. On the back of the pump is the vacuum valve, digital vacuum sensor, and vacuum intake port. We wanted equipment hookups to be as convenient as possible, so we set up the intake port with KF50, KF40, and KF25 connectors in series. Finally, the left side has the cooling water inlet, cooling water flow window, cooling water outlet, air compressor inlet, air compressor regulator, and pressure control switch. We won't get into installation and connection in this video, but it's a straightforward process, and our support team is always there if you run into any roadblocks. Anyway, now that we've covered the layout of our high vacuum pump, let's go ahead and run it. First, turn on the main switch you'll see the standby off and vacuum off lights illuminate. Next, use the main switch on the back of the chiller to turn it on. Then set the temperature to 23 degrees Celsius. And push the power button. Use the flow window to see whether the cooling water is circulating properly. Look for air pressure of at least three bar, ideally. Next, press standby on, and the HV40 will warm up for 20 minutes. The button will keep blinking during that whole time. You'll know the warm up has finished when the standby light stops blinking and remains on. At this point, you can press vacuum on, and the pressure will start falling rapidly. It'll reach 10-4 tor in about 4 minutes and 10-5 tor in about 5 minutes. By the way, you're free to switch between vacuum on and vacuum off whenever you need. You do not need to press standby on or standby off first. Eventually, you'll need to break the vacuum in order to unload and reload your sample. To do that, press vacuum off and then open the gas inlet valve. This releases the vacuum so you can easily open the end cap. In case you need to stop the high vacuum pump system, there is an emergency stop button that will halt the vacuum pump immediately. When it's time to resume, just turn the emergency stop button clockwise to release it. Then press standby on, which will restart your program from the warm up stage. Otherwise, when your process has finished, Press vacuum off. Then press standby off and wait about 20 minutes until standby off stops blinking. Now you can finally turn off the chiller and air compressor units as well. If you accidentally turn off the system before the standby off light stops blinking, you risk oxidizing the vacuum pump oil. This may result in decreased performance and a shorter lifespan necessitating additional maintenance of the vacuum pump. We hope you found this helpful, and as always, we're happy to answer any questions you might have about the SH-HV40 system or anything else in our line.